All right, hey, welcome back to another episode of Brothers of Metal. This is episode three, and uh, today we have a special topic. Uh, we're going to be ranking our favorite Dream Theater albums in order from uh, least favorite to favorite. That's I'm right. I'm John. Here I'm we Michael. Have. And uh, yeah, let's go. So the format for today is we're going to we're going to rank them five at a time. So 15 albums in total. Yep. We're going to do albums 15 to 11, kick it back over to Michael, then back and forth till we get to our number one. So looking forward to this because I think our lists are going to be uh, well different enough, I think, right? I think so. Uh, there's going to be some uh, def- definitely some differences probably when it comes to the worst Dream Theater albums. I'm guessing that when it comes to the best, that they'll be pretty close. But, but yeah, this is the band that probably unites us the most, I would say. We both talked about it yesterday sure. that um, even though they've had some shortcomings over the you know past few years or so, um, they're still currently our favorite band. We would still consider them our favorite. So this is Definitely. the band, band we wanted to start with, and they have a lot of material. So, so yeah. That's so, for sure. Yep. All right. So... Starting with my number 15, um, I'm going to have to go with uh, When Dream and Day Unite. And the okay. main reason for that is, I mean, if we're being honest, they just continue to get better from here. And, uh, you know, of course, adding James Labrie made yeah. a huge difference. That was a big difference, yeah. <laughs> the production, uh, the songwriting. There's still some great songs on the record, but that would be my 15. Um, let's see, okay. 14. I'm going to go with uh, Distance Over Time. Okay. Uh, 2019. And um, I mean, it's, I had a lot of uh, anticipation about this record. It's not a bad record. So did I. Yep. I had high I, expectations. I love how they went about recording this one. I mean, you know, living together in that, uh, that cabin or whatever it was for a mm-hmm. while, really bonding and, you know, doing the songwriting together. That was, that was really, really cool. So it definitely, um, I'd say it's it, compared to the album that came out prior to that, it definitely has. It's a bit more cohesive, I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe a bit more conventional Dream Theater, of course. But Very, uh, very concise album. Yeah, for sure, right? We got not quite... There's no epics. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some longer songs, of course. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just, you know, just over time, not my, not my favorite. Uh, 13 for me is going to be the self-titled. Okay. Um, in 2013. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I, I actually, there was, a, there, was a, there was a period of time I would have had this last for some reason. I just, I went back though recently, gave it another, sh- gave it another recent listen. And, okay. I mean, there's definitely some, some really, to me, some great highlights on here. Yeah. I mean, especially I the agree. Elimination Theory. Elimination Theory is. Uh, it's a very, very good epic. It is. It is. Um. I think what it was is like a couple of the songs that are a little too like on the nose, like in- inspired by say Rush or something like that. Oh yeah, I agree. Yep. I don't. I don't. It's it definitely would have my least favorite instrumental that they've done. I would. I, I would mean, agree with that too. Yeah. And Dance of Eternity is probably my favorite, but the long one on Train of Thought. Right. Stream I, of Consciousness. Yeah. Stream of Consciousness. That's, there you that's go. That's awesome. That's a winner. Yeah. But, you know, still, I mean, none of these are bad albums, for sure. No. But we, gotta but we, re- we have high high standards when it comes to Dream Theater. So. We do. And we're going to get, yeah, because we're getting to some classics. Yeah. Um, number 12. Number 12, 12 for me. Yep. Um, is going to be the latest one, A View from the Top of the World. Okay. Um, there's, uh, you know, you could, they're, they're, they're trying to... They're trying to break some new ground here still after all these years. It's cool, you know, to see, you know, John busted out an eight string for the first time. That's a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Um, I do like, I do love, you know, the epics. Amazing. Um, it, it's cool to get kind of back to that return to form. They're, they're all yeah. long songs. That was the key for me is it's, it's more of a return to form. Yeah. I mean, transcending time is a lot of fun. It really mm-hmm. breaks up kind of the brutality of the, of the other. Which, track, I think. Yeah. Which it kind of has a, it, that kind of has a rush feel too, but it wasn't it does. 
it wasn't too much maybe or maybe because it was yeah. only on one song it wasn't too too bad yeah for sure uh, and you know gosh andy andy sneep oh yeah flawless flawless mix there that was a must i hope they continue to work with him for sure yeah i agree back okay number 11 black clouds and silver linings um i think that in a lot of ways similar to the latest record you know there's there's only six tracks mm -hmm. um there there's there there are two epics um i mean wither is a great middle point for the record just to kind of get that that mellow ballad in there it is it was one of their best one of their better ballads i think for sure it's just super catchy anyway yeah amazing yeah uh i have to say shattered fortress my least favorite of the uh 12 step suite mm, for sure I, I would say close to my least favorite is still uh a rep repentance oh. i would have to say repentance. i like the concept but repentance is great because when you because when when you if, if you read steps eight and nine it makes sense there had to be that break Oh yeah, I, mean, make, epic, I just right? don't feel like the song was very good. I, I like I said, I like the idea. Maybe I thought it was a little, yeah. it's a little too boring. I mean, none of it touches the first three with the glass prison, but we'll no, no, but, I agree. Uh, I thought the shattered fortress, maybe a few too many recycled ideas. I think so too. But I do love part, you know, part twelve, if you will, it is, uh, you know, really, really to the point. I love that. Yeah, so, that's my. First five, bro. That's, what you got? That's 15 through 11. All right. So my 15th is the same as yours. When Dream and Day Unite. Simple reason. Never listened to it. I never heard. I never heard it all the way through. I don't like Charlie Dominici really at all. Man. I, I think I heard. I think they did two songs on the score DVD. I could be wrong. Maybe they did I, one. Uh, I'd have to look. I, at least one. But did you ever? Did, did you ever check out the live recording though, where they they did with James? The When Dream and Day Reunite. I yeah. think I checked a little bit of it out, but I can't judge an album based off it being performed by another singer. No, I'm so, just saying, <laughs> in terms of the songs, I mean, there are some great songs. There. I think I did check out a little bit of it, but maybe I just wasn't... If they were going to re-record it, I'd be all all in, interested, but I don't think it would work with James's vocal style right now. But anyway, so that was an easy... The, the top or the worst five were very easy for me. Next... Is no. is yeah. the the astonishing? I I must say I do not care for this album. Criminal at, at all. Soda. No, we don't care for soda. You don't care for soda. No, no, we don't like soda at all. Sorry. I knew you, I didn't think I thought you would put it in your top five worst. I can't believe it's out of out of the top five worst. But no, wait. Give a few reasons. I could we could we'll eventually probably debate the astonishing in a video going down the road. But it, it's way too long. It's way too soft. Um, they should have uh, told the story with instrumentals. There should have been some songs that had are just instrumental songs and partially tell the story with mu musically, like they do with A Dance of Eternity. Um, there's way too many tracks. Um, uh, uh, yeah, what, what else? Um, the story is too Disney-ish. So I, th I thought of an idea. What, what should they have done with a concept album? Because I was thinking about it the other day. I think they should have taken In the Presence of Enemies, the story that, that Petrucci was kind of mm. working on, turn that into a concept record. It would be the like they do with Metropolis Part 1. They turn a yeah. song into a whole concept record. That would have been cool. It would have been super heavy. And they could have used, you know, themes from that song. And I think that would have been perfect. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll talk about it more down the road. But 13, Distance Over Time. I think you had it as 14, so we're close. Okay. Um, again, way too many short songs. I thought they should have returned to form here. I wanted longer songs. I wanted it to be heavier. And I wanted I want it to be more like dramatic turns. That's what I was waiting for. And it wasn't at all. I felt... Too many of the songs were a little, they just felt lifeless to me. Um, especially chorus-wise, melody-wise, they were just too robotic and just didn't have enough emotion. And I thought lyrically at times it was a bit weak. And for whatever reason, even though I love that they, they lived, to, lived together and they bonded, and I thought, you know, 
the creative juices would be flowing, but it just it just fell flat for me. Um, next album, self-titled for sure. Mm. Now I actually liked this album when I first heard it, maybe the first couple weeks, and then for whatever reason, this rarely happens. The album just kept getting worse and worse for me, and it's one that I just don't go back to. And again, I thought there were too many soft, almost. I don't know if John was watching too much Disney movies where there's too many songs that just don't even feel like metal at all. Now, you could have a ballad that's not heavy and it still feels metal. I don't know. There's something about it, either lyrically or tonally. It still has a metal vibe. And some of the songs just didn't. And you brought up there's two songs that are too much of a Rush ripoff. Um, even though, obviously, the influence is there. If, when you listen to Images and Words, there's a definite influence but it, they didn't do it to this extent i think the vocal mix is good but i don't like the tone of any of the instruments on that album i hate the sound of the snare drum it's super distracting i don't like the guitar tone for whatever reason and the bass tone is just too it's like they can't they can't get like middle ground it's like either uh my young is buried or he's too much in the forefront you got to find like a middle ground and i just didn't like um, the mix really at all. I forgot who who mixed it, but he's done good work. It, ju it just didn't work. Um, and then I, but I do like the epic. I think it's a really really well written epic, and I think that was a the drum drumming performance on the epic was was great. And I was kind of I wasn't sure about Mangini at the time because well he didn't really get to show what he could really do on dramatic turns. He was more kind of following the the uh, existing drum tracks that that John had already produced, so I was waiting for something, and I like his his performance on this album overall. But I mean, it's a, he had big shoes to fill. So anyway, next one. This is kind of, might surprise you, even though I love the record. Now I'm getting into the records that I really love, and it's really really hard to rank. So I went with Falling Into Infinity, as much as I love this record. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I think it's a great album. I thought if I had to be critical, I just thought it was a, maybe a little too 90s sounding, almost kind of trying to um, sit on the fence between grunge and metal. I don't know exactly what they were going for. And then I felt that you could kind of feel that the label was meddling with their songs or their sound. And you could tell, you could kind of tell. So that's my 15 through 11. Back to you, John. All right, getting back into it, um, heading into number 10. Yep. Uh, 10 for me is going to be Train of Thought. Really? Yup. Now, here's something I have to say. Uh, until we get to the top five, I mean, honestly, a lot of this stuff I could I could move around tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's very true. I, I'm pretty sure number 15 will, is always going to be 15. Mm -hmm. And those top five are, you know, for now, are going to stay the top five. Some of the stuff in the middle, it's hard. I mean, like I said in the beginning, there's there's not a bad record. No. There are definitely ones that at this moment I'd prefer to listen to over the others. Um, I so agree. 2003 for Train of Thought. Mm -hmm. um, and... This would have been the first Dream Theater album I bought brand new on release day. Okay, that's cool. That's got to have some significance. Some sentimental yeah. value. Sentimental and, value, uh, yeah. You know, the same same CD that I bought that day at a Sweet. best spot, probably. But I, you know, I, I, I do like this record. Um, I, you know, lo again, it, they, they've done this multiple times where it's right about the middle of the album you get you get that pause, that kind of reprieve, and, and vacant is definitely that. Vacant, that's a yeah, that's a really, really interesting ballady song. It's great. Yeah. Stream of Consciousness is a great instrumental. Uh, I you know I do love this Dying Soul as you know continuing on with steps four mm -hmm. and five. Um, How about no, on, me, on, five, Honor six. Thy Father? Six. Come on. Yeah, Honor Thy Father is great too. I love. Uh, is it? It is on Honor They Father. I love that whole instrumental section where Mike brought in all those different movie samples. Yeah, that was really, really cool. That's, that's been a, a big influence on me personally. And he, he incorporated some great stuff. I think he took some stuff in there from uh, 
from uh, that Paul Thomas Anderson movie Magnolia. There's some great quotes mm-hmm. in there. All right, moving on. Um, I'm going to go with the first album featuring Mr. Mike Mangini, A Dramatic Turn of Events. Okay. And it's, uh, I think, an album that I, I would love to see. Maybe Andy get a hold of those tracks and uh, re release Really? Them. Maybe. I think it's one of their best sounding records. I can't believe you said that. I was hoping they would go back to whoever mixed that one. Do you have the name on with you? Well, you it is the... Andy, but it's Andy Wallace. Guy's a genius. But I hey, guess we... it sounds. Re- I'm not saying it sounds bad. It sounds really, really good. I, guess I, just, we I, just think, huh? I just think with what they've uh, been able to figure out with this last record, I mean, just the 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 way they've been able to bring the way they've been able to bring uh, Mike into the into the forefront i mean his drum sounds so good on this last record so yeah yeah that, they, that, oh for sure that's one thing i would say but other well, I than thought that his, i thought the sound was perfect on dramatic turns it was just well the mix is great i don't think he was able to balance to, yeah i just don't think he was able to let loose you know he wasn't involved in the songwriting process at all so well that aside i mean uh the songwriting on here is awesome i i think on the backs of angels is still probably my favorite, my single favorite Dream Theater song since Mike left. Mike okay. Left. And, you know, that was the first single. And it's it's just, I mean, and, and even to this day, if somebody says like, hey, what's Dream Theater about? That might be the song I go to. Mm-hmm. But if you pull me under, just because a lot of people nowadays would find that dated. in terms. Yeah, of yeah. So it's like more of their modern, more modern pull me under, I would say. Well, and then, you know, there is the images and words connection on this record, too, where it's we talked about that. I think, you know, journalists talked about that too, where it does seem to sort of kind of follow a similar uh, uh, arrangement in terms of the songs and the style of the songs and stuff like that, which is, which yeah, is interesting. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. In, in parts, you know, the mm-hmm. uh, Far From Heaven into Breaking All Illusions is, you know, sort of the... Yeah, uh, yeah this one had two ballads, so a little bit... It did. Yeah, it did. but I think one was really late in the songwriting process, so it barely made it on, so that might be gotcha. why. But yeah, I, I I do definitely really appreciate this album. Next is going to be Falling in, Into Infinity for me. What number are we on here? That's a really good question. I started with Train of Thought, so 10, 9, 8. 8, okay. Uh, falling Into Infinity. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, there's there's enough has been said about what was going on during the making of this record and the way they were sort of, you know, steered in directions they didn't quite, you mm-hmm. know, believe in. Uh, and that's okay. I, I think in terms of their overall catalog, you know, this is definitely an outlier, but it's a good one. And the songwriting here is amazing. I thought, you know, James Boyce is 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 incredible on this one. You know, I, I love having the well, considering I think that was around the time where he had all his his vocal issues. So considering, it was, it was a, no, it was a few years after, but this would be the first. Uh, I think actually, a change of seasons was the first recording he did post. Oh, really? The injury, yeah. But that's. Yeah that's one track and in this case uh you know and i gosh just turns out we talked about instrumentals but i love hell's kitchen hell's kitchen is just yeah it's got such a vibe it doesn't it's not the shreddiest song it's not the most complicated but i love it um hollow years i mean that has a great song yeah you know, like in terms you know ballad if you want to call it that or just yeah they really nailed their soft songs on this and there's some really yeah. like really soft Anna Lee. yeah annalee and peruvian skies Yep, and and in sections of, of you know the Battle of Tears. I mean, it's just awesome. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, it was hard because I, I love that album. I I I could change it. You know, like you said, tomorrow we could change our mind. Whatever, whatever you're in the mood for. But. So let's see, two more, and then I kick back to you. All right, next for me is <laughs> the astonishing. Ugh. Give me a break. At number break. seven. Number seven. Uh, the astonishing for me is, uh, I mean, clearly it's my it's it's my favorite uh, post Portnoy release. Um, although I will say it's not necessarily the one I listen to the most of all of them. Uh, I we'll we'll talk about it I guess in its own episode. Yeah, we're gonna so, have to. We have so to. controversial, but uh, I really love the record. I know it's long. Uh, I tend to put it on if I have either a really long drive. Um, and to me, the payoff is how you get to the end of it. I mean, getting through, getting through that entire journey, 
I like the story enough, and I like the characters enough. James's performance on that, I mean, is like undoubtedly one of his best ever in terms of yeah, I should how he changed his voice here and there, and uh, just the uh, the emotion he put into it. I mean, that guy, he he did his homework on that, and he he really put his everything into it. You can tell. And I agree. Yep. Um, I would say getting into that the closing of it when you get to um, um, get to our uh, our new world and just kind of that closing segment is just such a payoff at the end and it's to me it's glorious. I love it. More on that another day. So next uh, for my number six is going to be Octavarium. And um, okay. Octavarium, interestingly enough, this is when I took a really long break from Dream Theater. I just told you I bought Train of Thought on release day. Okay. I did not buy Octavarium on release day. Wow. I, I was I was kind of on a break. I heard it had me hooked from the root of all evil. Oh, and yeah. then lost me. For some reason it was just wow. the, it was just nice. like where I was at it at in life at the time and I, I lost track even of something X at that time too for some reason. Hmm. Must have been uh, a oh, dark well, dark period. It was <laughs> those are dark days. But I went back <laughs> and I love it and I think probably score. When I watched score, I fell back in love with Dream Theater again. That, One of that, the best that, that live concert. DVDs ever. Yeah, it's really really good. You got to see Octavarium, I believe, with the orchestra, right? They did that in that in Six Degrees. They did Six Degrees too. Yeah, yeah. and James, James is just amazing on that that live performance. It's one of yeah. his best for sure. Absolutely killer, and especially just, with all he had to do on that. It's, yeah, set list sure. is ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah, great, um, great lyrics throughout this album. It's just, it's, it's just, it's solid all around. Yep. All right, kicking it back to you. Agree. Yeah, I should have. I mean, I should have said um, or prefaced when I, I was super critical of the astonishing that James is, he's great on it. I just thought they wasted a great performance by him. I thought the songs could have been a lot better. Anyway, we were on, I'm starting with 10. 10, I put Black Clouds. And okay. that album was 10 at number 10. You had that 10? Okay. No, I'm saying um, you got, it's album number 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah, correct. That's right. Um, so I, I love, I really love this album. So it's hard to be critical. If I had to be, I thought at times a little weak lyrically and melody wise. And surprisingly from Portnoy, I thought, is, as much as I like Best of Times, it's a really yep. t touching song. I just thought, eh, it was a little weak lyrically because maybe it was so personal that it was, it was hard. It was clearly his actual story, and it wasn't like he was hiding the message of the song or anything. So it was just, I don't know, it just didn't, and melody-wise, it just didn't hook me, even though musically it's awesome. I think it's really cool. But that, that had a big rush, rush influence on it, too. And then, and as well as the Shattered Fortress, I just thought it could have been better. And I, I feel like maybe you could sense the conflict in the band a little bit. Maybe it, it was coming mostly from Pornoy. He just wasn't very happy at the time. But I do love that record, and I think it's still their best-selling record, I want to say, or it's close to their best charted or best-selling. So they were hitting, they were reaching their peak of popularity, too. So it was... Um, but there's a lot of stuff I love. I love Count of Tuscany, um, and I, I love Wither, and it's the opening track. Nightmare to Remember. I do really like that song. Okay, next, Octavarium at number nine. This was tough, too. I think it's almost a perfect record, actually. There, there's a lot of highlights. The record sounds, like, spectacular. The songs are really strong. And I thought they were kind of still riding their creative peak at this time. But for whatever reason, I don't love the epic, the title track. I like it. I thought it built too slowly. The, the intro is just a little too long. You could have cut a few minutes off the song, and I think that would have really helped. Number probably eight. The, probably from the intro. From the intro. Yeah, correct. Number eight, a view from the top of the world. So I put this... I think it's the second best, obviously, since the in the Mangini era. I thought it was a, it they did what I wanted them to do. I I still think the album could be a little better. I wanted long songs. I wanted more, just traditional dream theater songs. 
I wanted it to be heavy. And I wanted it to basically sound like dramatic turns. That's what I was looking for. Because I thought that's the best they could do with Mangini. So I want something close to it. Um, if I had to be, and I, I thought the album sounds great. We said Andy Sneep's work on that. And I forgot the name of the guy who engineers their albums. But it sounds huge. It just has a huge sound. Just blast through your speakers. But it's not, you know, overly loud. And it's the clarity is is unbelievable. And I would say if I had to be a little, little critical, I think lyrically, we talked about this yesterday. There's still times in the post Portnoy era where the lyrics are almost a little cringy to me, a little too. It's that I don't know the Disney influence. I don't know what it is, but it's I need a little bit deeper lyrics at times. I think James Labrie's lyrics are fantastic on this album. I wish he would write a little bit more. And his performance was great on it as well. The epic is amazing. And I think it, I think the album needed maybe a ballad too. Something yeah. like something like Beneath the Surface. I think if you would have added that, mm -hmm. I think you're we're really talking, but I would say it was a really good return to form record. Number seven. What is that sign language? Seven. Systematic Chaos. I would say, I love this record too, so it's hard, it's hard to be critical of these. I'd say it's probably their catchiest heavy record. Uh, if I have to be a little critical, like I said before, I don't love the song Repentance. I love the, the concept. I love the idea. I love him getting his friends to do the, the voiceover work on there. I thought that worked. But I don't love, the, it's just a song that I'm almost... Um, I feel like I'm about, you know, I feel like skipping at times. And that's the only, or in the Portnoy era, that's probably the only song I would feel like possibly skipping. And then also there may have been, may have been too many, you know, Met Metallica sounding songs. Even though I like it, I love, um, what's the song? Uh, Constant Motion. I do love that song, but I thought maybe a little bit too Metallica sounding. Anyway, still love the record. Have that at number seven. Number six, dramatic turn of events. Um, definitely the best in the Mangini era. It was an album where they these guys really wanted to prove themselves, and I think they really did. It, definitely a, a John Petrucci-driven record that I think he hasn't been able to top since then for whatever reason. Uh, I love the guitar tone, especially. The album sounds amazing, and it's really a unique album. It doesn't sound like other Dream Theater albums per se, but I just thought it was a really unique album. And so, like I said, my, probably my favorite sounding DT album. And then you said you don't, you wish Andy Sneap would take a crack at these songs. Just I think it's the most perfect yeah. <laughs> uh, album sonically that I've ever heard. Huh. To be honest with you, I, it's perfect. Wow. So I don't know what else that guy has mixed. What did you say his name was? Sorry, I want to I I plug him. I didn't because I did not want to take a, a stab at pronouncing his... Uh... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. For that record? A Andy something, right? A it's Andy Wallace. Andy Wallace. There, Andy Wallace. Okay. We'll have to look that's up his work. That's the mix. Man's a genius. All right. That's... Uh... Over to you, John. See your uh, final five. We're getting All to right, the final five, five best Dream Theater records. Five best. I think I'm pretty much settled on this. I don't see it changing a whole lot. So two reasons. Um, obviously, my top, my, my five favorite, but the five that I would say I go to the most, listen to the most. And the one I probably, out of all these, I, in fact, listen to the most is number five. Okay. And that's going to, and that's going to be Systematic Chaos. I don't know what it okay. is, but when I get a, when I, when I start to kind of get a niche for Dream Theater, First thing I want to hear is that -na 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 -na. I want to hear the beginning oh, of the that, that, that could be the best intro, it, right? Of all their albums, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Imagine that into a concept record where you you do that theme again. Come on, yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. It's great. I love how it bookends the album. You know, mm -hmm. like some some of the classic Rush albums would do yeah. that. Um, uh, you know, Pink Floyd did that on Animals. Just 
that whole idea of having kind of those those bookends of, of a one continuous track. Yeah, or, I like uh, those little little creative details. Uh, they. I think I said yeah. animals. Animals does kind of do that, but wish you were here is what I was thinking of. Um, and um, man, Forsaken. Oh, it's a good song. That, great, that's a commercial. great lyrics. Uh, that opening is is so good. Um, lyrically, Dark Eternal Nine, I could I could totally do without. I mean, it's. Yeah, but I love. Uh, what about Ministry of Lost Souls? That, and, oh that my gosh. could have been that could have been turned into uh, a con concert record too. Hundred percent, and just that whole outro section of that song. The, oh uh, man, the chord progression. Yeah, I could just keep going. They could have got. That's one time where I'm just like, hey, you guys want to just go another couple minutes? Yeah, on that. with that with that mel that melody. Yeah, you could have played that all day. Same that with was, his. Well, you you said you don't like Dark Eternal Night as much, but that ending riff could have gone on for. 15 oh. minutes and you <laughs> still love it that was gold yeah i mean uh in province of war is uh is, is that is a also, great song also some magic and i will say too one of the things that was so special about this album is that this was the time period where they were well i guess it started with um scenes from a memory but from scenes from a memory all the way through this this here album number nine um there was a lot of commentary that they were doing yeah, there was there was a commentary DVD for this album. It was commentary which is, on the yeah, which is so in, so entertaining, so entertaining, right? Yeah, it's and unbelievable. I, I still yeah, still go back to that. It's hilarious. You know, Mike yep. was Mike was so funny, and I love the recording studio footage. Yep. Uh, you know, we there was there was there was uh, even you know those commentary tracks on a couple of the Etsy Jam releases. Mm -hmm. And that was just a good time. I mean, I it was I, I missed yeah. that. I missed that. That almost mystery science theater dream theater was. I don't know if any band has been that open. That's the thing, right? Like you really felt like so. you knew the guys. Yeah. During that time period, which was so cool. I agree. All right, number four is going to be images and words. Okay. And uh, you know what hasn't been said about this record? It is amazing. I have mm -hmm. to say, I have three ahead of it, but it's uh, gosh, I mean, it's perfect all the way through. There's not There's, a bad one on this thing. You can't be critical. It's perfect. Perfect. Yep. All right. So moving along then. Awake mm -hmm. be number three. And um, Awake is a really special record for me because it's so different from images and words, I think. It is. And it's Yeah, not. just as good in quality. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my favorite instrumental for sure. Okay. Erotomania, for sure. Okay. It's it's just it's it's interesting it has you know kind of those nods to you know the later of course the later track it is a, a trilogy you know mind beside itself mm -hmm. but gives you a little bit of that hint at what's to come with voices in the silent man yeah i love how you know there's space divest which was you know just a kevin moore composition yep it's he's a genius it's for yeah sure. on 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 you know if you're unfamiliar with the band that song is completely out of place on the record but we yeah. know as fans that you know they, they made it a dream theater song it totally yep. is and it's a special song they've never done anything like it it's true and i do like their comp the way they kind of changed the song for uh that live dvd breaking the fourth wall where they oh, added yeah, kind sure. of the instrumental sure. section to it i thought that worked that's a song you could actually re-record that way yeah yeah i mean the original is just special i mean i, I love and i love the voiceovers and uh, anyways, just just uh, just a great great album. Number yep. two for me is going to be Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. Okay, I thought yeah, I thought it would be your second or third. Yeah, it's um, I remember buying this in the store. I probably bought this shortly after it came out, not quite on release day. I had just kind of gotten into them after they released this one, and uh, I mean. I'm a huge fan of A Change of Seasons. Obviously, we're not going to talk about that on, yeah. on the segment because it's yeah. a full album. But I don't know. I mean, for 42 minutes, besides, you know, in terms of everything that we listen to our own, besides the Odyssey, I mean, it is the perfect epic. I mean, it the it overture really is. is yeah. And then you're getting all these nods to, you know, other... It, it just cool that they broke it up into, you know, eight tracks for you to, mm -hmm. to skip through, but there's no need. It's just like you got to take it in as a whole. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yep. Every part works so well, and so much of it is so memorable. But the, I mean, it, the diversity in the sound, the diversity too, in the, the know, whole 
record is there? I mean, I yep. blind, you know, blind faith, misunderstood the great debate and disappear. Those are all songs. I mean, they were listening to all kinds of stuff. Well, I mean, studio. glass prison. Come on. Well, yeah, but I mean, it certainly was a leap forward. I think in terms of the instrumental prowess, I think by this, oh, for sure. You know, I agree. Jordan yep. Brutus on board for a full studio session. They knew, yep. he knew like, okay, we got, we got this guy now. We are clearly the most talented band in the world. Like, there's just no, yeah, there's no doubt. Officially, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and and just, I mean, the, having those tender moments too, like with Misunderstood and mm -hmm. Greed. Special love, love, Blind Faith. Yep. So obviously that just leaves um, one. Actually, one more thing to say about Six Degrees. I think this might be the first time they started to maybe incorporate some more kind of. Uh, social issues that they weren't necessarily so on the nose about you must believe this way because it's yeah they kind of they played the center which is and and they, they did it well too it is in fact called the great debate yeah and they're asking all the questions that you know in terms of like the philosophical element of it i thought yeah i thought they were fa fair to both sides presented both arguments but didn't take a side pretty perfectly yeah they're they're yeah. They're, they're presenting to you the debate in a, a musical format which and and gosh, this is years ago. Yeah, a, amazing job. Yep. Guys. And same thing, you know, of course, with you know, prophets of war, they would do that in other ways. But yep. uh, I will say, obviously, number one is going to be. I should, gra I should grab my vinyl. Head. Oh, with all the signatures. <laughs> yeah, I forgot it. Yeah, I mean, you know, what else can you say? I mean, it's um, it is the concept album. Yep. The concept album. I mean, not the only is the Yep. Not only is the concept great, it's not so on the nose that you're just like, yeah, I totally understand everything that happened by first yeah, listen. Yeah, exactly. It's very you a know. progressive story. Yes. Right? <laughs> it's got mystery. It's got suspense. It's got, you know, uh, it's got it all. And, and it's very poignant and very, you know, just some, some really, yeah, some very, very like sweet moments. And mm -hmm. I, I love, you know, that, that, I, gosh, and I wish they would call her up again, but having uh, a Oh, threesome. I know. She's awesome. They should bring her back for something. Man. Maybe, I, I think, um, sorry to interrupt you, but they should have put a female voice on The Astonishing, and if yes. you're going to bring one, it should have been her. Been her. I think Can they did. imagine? Yeah, that would have been perfect. Yeah, I mean, even Queensryche brought Pamela Moore back for Operation yeah. Mindcrime, too. I mean, it would have been... It's like, hey, we're doing a concept record again. Yep. It's not related to the other story. That would have been awesome. Yep. Um, um, but uh, yeah, like that. It's, and I'm okay. You know, with the, you know, it's got a little bit of that hero worship, like Ray Gig in the Sky, Pink Floyd influence on it. Mm -hmm. totally Definitely. Okay with that. And they could yep. just keep. They could, they, they, they could they bring her back anytime, Dream Theater. That'd be great. But anyway, Ag agreed. Enough said about it. It's my number one. Always will be. Great. Probably. Excellent choice. All right, your turn. All right. All right, number five, train of thought. It's, um, I'd say it's the yeah, it's the first Dream Theater album I really got into because I was going from Symphony X to Dream Theater and I needed, I wanted something heavy, and that was their heaviest record, and that was the first one I was kind of drawn to. I think I liked Images and Words at the, initially too, but musically, it's might be my favorite Dream Theater record just to, um. Like I'm not saying objectively it's their best musically. It's just the one I love listening to. Um, let's see, and it's the one record I could listen to any time, any day. I'm always in the mood for Train of Thought. All right, number four, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. Well, we've said quite a bit about this album. I just want to reiterate that I think it's the pinnacle of their creativity. It's the most massive, diverse, ambitious virtuosic metal album ever recorded i think it's it's the ultimate look look what we can do look what i can do <laughs> oh. which is what i love about dream theater cuz i want them to show off that's why i hate the sh too many short songs you're you're the ultimate band when it comes to ta just pure talent i want to hear it you know don't uh don't suppress the talent all right, number three, Awake. We said before, it's on the level of images. It's a little bit heavier, maybe a little more profound at times, lyrically. Um, 
it's essentially a perfect album. So I could have I could have flipped this, made it my number two. But it's 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 at times jaw droppingly good. Like the songs are almost unbelievably good to where you're just like, how did they come up with that? It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Number two, images and words. I'd say I put it as my number two because it's just an absolutely flawless progressive metal album. And I think it's the it essentially created the genre. You could make an argument. It's the their grabbiest record. Most I think it's still their most commercial sounding album, at least for the yeah, time. Yeah, most most immediate. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I said, it's probably the most influential album of the genre. Mm -hmm. And I thought James Labrie was just on his own in his own universe for that album. I don't think any singer has topped him when it comes to his recordings on that album. Yeah, that he was he was just on his own. That and awake. And yep, awake. and awake and awake too. Yeah. And then, one. and then you listen oh. to uh, the live in, I guess, live at the Marquee or the live in Tokyo recordings. Yeah. Blows Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So my number one is the same as your number one. I think we knew that what going you know? in. Yeah. <laughs> Metropolis Part Two Scenes from a Memory. Cool. So believe it or not, I didn't like this record when I first heard it. Same. But now it's could be my all time favorite metal album, period. It's that good. I, the most all-encompassing progressive record. I think it really takes what all the great progressive bands did, and they just did it better. Uh, you, obviously, the Pink Floyd influence, Genesis, Yes, bands like that, and they just just upped them. Yep. Um, yeah, and nothing more to say. It's a perfect album. It's the best concept album I think ever re ever recorded, and it's the gold standard for sure. Progressive metal. So that is our list. It's our list. Right on. Yep. All right, bro. You want to introduce our next segment? Oh yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, our cousin CJ Price, who's a member of a uh, a group we call the X Pack. It's the three of us. We've been going to Just concerts. Three. Yeah, been going to concerts for about twelve years now. He's also a huge Dream Theater fan. He's gonna rate rate our list and then give his own list. So. We'll be back with C.J. Price. Just like that. Boy, he's a weird guy, isn't he? Hey. hey. <laughs> All right, so we're here with C.J. Price, our cousin. Also a huge yeah. Dream Theater fan. Yep, cousin. Yeah. So. Big fan of everything 2011 and before. <laughs> Big fan. All right, so you know our list. So first thing we want to hear is... Which list do you think is the best? And then go ahead and fire away with your list if it if there's some big differences. All right. So out of the two of your lists, I got to agree with Michael the most. Because uh, we had the same top four with the exception of one difference. Okay. And how, uh, how big was the difference? Pretty eh, – not too big, actually. Yeah, it was a pretty even trade. Okay. To be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, I just kind of switched out not too much. And then our, our bottom is pretty close, except I think I'm going to be different than both of you with what I think is – what you guys thought was the worst is not my worst. Really? What's your worst? Yeah. My worst is the astonishing. Okay. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. It was close to mine. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I listened to it once, and okay. it's been just sitting – collecting dust ever since wow. oh, man. I, I don't think i can name one song off of it I, I, this is how much research i did i was like i'm gonna go into it i'm gonna rate them off of do i know songs off that album you should have seen it and live I, eh, I, I heard it <laughs> in the studio i saw it which twice one could argue a studio recording version might be the best version of a song yes like there one are bands one, that are one can argue yep yeah and it wasn't a huge fan of it <laughs> And then after that, which was hard for me to do. So Astonishing was the worst. After that, yeah. hard for me to do because we had a listening party for it. We went to Best Buy to pick up the album. Yeah. And we were the only ones to do this. True. I think in, in the world. <laughs> Probably. Self-titled self album. Yeah. Uh, we were so excited. Got, oh, very excited. And I convinced myself I liked it when it came out. Because we hyped it up so much. So did and I. And then about, yeah. I want to say a week later, I was like, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> this, 
Did not like it. Not a fan. Just so you know, we st- we started the video off by going, oh, you know, none of these are bad records. They're all great. This is just how we ranked it. But I <laughs> no. love like, I love your I love your candid. Just no, I don't yeah. think so. they can make. They've been around for what four almost forty years. Close to it, right? Thirty-five years or so. Right? We're getting, we're getting there. Uh, yeah, yeah 30, thirty. I guess thirty-seven years. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make some stinkers, right? Right. Third Con- worst. Continue, CJ. A view from the top. Uh, Third worst. Of, what? In my opinion, yeah. Yeah. Huh. I wasn't a fan. Uh, I'm glad I didn't really. I went and saw them on the A View from the Top tour. You did, and yeah. You saw him too, and you said the crowd was great. I saw him at the Microsoft Theater. Yeah, that's what it's called, Microsoft Theater. Yeah. In downtown LA, paid ninety dollars. Uh, for two tickets, down. right? Yeah. But that's not bad. Down before the show to ten bucks a piece. Oh and wow. I was like, crazy. Wow. You know, people are really desperate to make wow. ten dollars, six dollars after you pay Ticketmaster. They blocked off the entire back part of the theater. So it was just the bottom part was open and the two side sections. So the far left, far right side sections were also closed off. They wouldn't let you sit there. So it was just basically, huh. it, was, it was, they, I got there and they were like, oh yeah, your ticket is up there. You can't sit there. Just pick anything that's open down on the bottom. Go ahead and get they on treated, the stage. <laughs> yeah. They treated it like a general admission show. Which that was a view from the top tour. So that's what I associate that album with is quite honestly. The uh, sounds like a view from the front row. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it was. I, I think I was in the 15th row. For it. I, and then I, I just him? ended up moving yeah. back to like row 25 or something because no one was there. So I could stretch out. I, I didn't have to smell. But that's not a band. that's not a reflection on the band or the album. It's just. For, I don't know what happened because it was an experience what I experienced. It was a packed house when I saw him in Arizona. So it's because it's so hot there all the time. Everybody just wants to <laughs> they be just inside. Want, they just want a break. Yeah. I think it was like in February, so it's not even hot. Yeah. People just wanted a break from being outside in Arizona. That because it's <laughs> cold as cold as all hell. <laughs> Fourth worst, of course, when Dreaming Day. Fourth worst, insane. Yeah, well, hear me out because I <laughs> like when they re- recorded it with James Labrie. But that so, doesn't count. You have to judge it with the original singer. Okay, Afterlife is a song that I actually really enjoy listening to with the original singer and with James Labrie. Okay, the it three albums song. I mentioned previously, I don't really <laughs> listen to any of the songs off of those albums. Okay, ever. I'm not like in the car and I'm like, hey Siri, put on. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the songs are called off those albums. <laughs> but I will go, hey, Siri, play Afterlife. And then I'll be like, the Juice of Reversion. version. <laughs> throw it in there real quick. You whisper it, so she knows. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> Next All right. One. Next one. For me, Distance Over Time. Uh, not a fan of it. Once, once I get to... Black Clouds. That's when I'll be like, I'm a fan. But up until then, <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> Distance right. over time. Another one that I, I was excited for, and it just didn't do anything for me. Okay. Next after that, Falling Into Infinity, which I think there are some good songs off that album. But when I first started listening to Dream Theater, that was by far my least favorite one. Okay. And all of the albums I'm about to mention had already come out by the time I got into Dream Theater. And Falling Into Affinity was the one that I just never listened to. Okay. Like, there are some good songs on it. It's not a bad album, but compared to the rest of my list, it is my least favorite. Okay. Black Clouds and Silver Linings. That was the album right before I got into them. Okay. But I think, like, Wither, I think, is a great, like, track that I think could have gotten some radio play. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the radio would play metal, which they do not. Yeah. But I'm sure it got some on like Sirius XM, the Boneyard, maybe. <laughs> but Count of Tuscany, that was the best part of their most recent tour, I thought, was seeing them play that in its entirety. I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Nightmare to Remember is off that album as well. Opening, right? yeah. opening track, yep. yeah. Great song as well. Good album. Just not better, in my opinion, than my next one, which was the album 
that came out when I first got into them in 2011, a dramatic turn of events. Okay. I think there's a lot of great tracks off that album. The title track, uh, was it Breaking All Illusions? The, yep, that's yeah, a I love, yeah, second to last song. I love the yep. to that song, that whole song. I think that album was pretty complete, top to bottom, because I think Portnoy still had an influence on that album. He did, did not. He did, he did not? not? Nope. Well, maybe... Well, called them on the phone. <laughs> other than other than maybe trying to prove they could they could do a great album with without and that was the motivation. Might have been, yeah, not in a not in a confrontational manner, but just kind of like you knew that they knew the anticipation from the fans would have to be like, can they do this? Yep, you know, very true. And they did. They definitely yep, did. They did. That was a great album. One that like they played. That's one of the few albums that like when it comes out, I want to hear those songs on the tour. Like, yeah, with most fans, true. it's like, they're like, we're going to play something off our new album. You're like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> but with that one, I was like, all right, let's hear it. And that was yeah. the last album they had where I was like, let's listen to some of the new stuff. Ever yep. since then, like, and I like how, what was what was the album that came out? And then they toured with Metropolis, and they just did the whole thing in its entirety 20 years ago. Oh, after. that was the... That's, that's what the, we wanted. That's the distance <laughs> over time. Yeah. 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 That's and then the songs they played off distance over time. I I was at the Wiltern and I was pretty far back and I remember just like looking at people just like on their phones, <laughs> not recording, like just you, scrolling. You were you were with us that night? You went I with didn't us. I didn't sit with you guys that night. Yeah, but I I went with you though, and we met the band. Oh, after. that's right. But that's I didn't right. sit with you guys cuz you guys bought your tickets beforehand and I ended up picking one up for 30 bucks. That's right. Which yeah. by the way is the best part about being a fan of metal is that I can see my favorite band for thirty dollars <laughs> and pretty close up most of the time too. Well, Carla yeah. wanted to see this guy named Bad Bunny. Oh, uh, who, how much was that? I didn't take her. It was <laughs> five hundred dollars after fees just to get into SoFi Stadium. Jeez. Yeah, which I'm SoFi Stadium. I heard is awful for a concert. It's criminal. So I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm. I've seen. Iron Maiden, Megadeth, Anthrax, Testament, Overkill for $26. Granted, it was in San Bernardino in August, so they were overcharging. <laughs> yeah. That's the greatest. That's the greatest part about being a metal fan, is that you can see your favorite band. Symphony X and Ice are toured together for $30. I think, I think they paid us for that. For, yeah, that's and, those, and those were amazing shows. Yeah, that was, that was a great tour. Yep, agreed. We saw Dream Theater at the up, Grove, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a great show. Yep. That was real close up. I think that was when we saw them, what was that, three times in yeah, four yeah, nights? Yeah, in a matter of four nights. The yeah. spirit continues to carry on. Remember that? It was, uh, right. Oh, yeah. That was Still our first video YouTube. together. Our first yeah. YouTube. I think it's anyway. up to, like, at least 67 views. Hey, we're killing it. Boy. We're killing it. Yeah. All right, what's your next one? Awake after that. Great okay. album. I just like my next six a lot better than that album. But Awake had tons of great tracks. Caught in a Web is probably my favorite off that album. Six O'Clock, Silent Man, tons of great. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Great album. And I'm going to move so, on to the next so, one. So it's great? It's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah. No, we're getting into great territory. No more no more pure poop left <laughs> on this. We, once we passed over distance over time, we got into some good music. Yep. Done. I believe. Yep. After Awake, I have Systematic Chaos, just because I I enjoy how heavy that album is. It, there's some songs on there that feel like actual, just like straightforward metal tracks mixed in with the proggy stuff that you love them for. I agree. And yeah. I would always, yeah, I would always like when they would have like some more mainstream sounding stuff mixed with more progressive sounds. Yep, with Forsaken and yeah, for sure. Constant, yeah. mo constant Motion. Yep. Yep. There's somewhere it just sounds like Metallica on that album. Yeah, yeah. With like a proggy influence into it, I and mean, I really enjoy Metallica's first four albums. And then after that, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> That's the thing. Hey, Dream Theater had a longer shelf life than Metallica in my yeah. opinion in terms of putting out good music. For very, a very true. Of time. Oh yeah. Granted, Metallica did have someone die, but uh, Dream Theater lost their first singer, and that was devastating. <laughs> All right. <laughs> After Systematic, I have Octavarium. I think Octavarium. Panic Attack. It's amazing. And also my 
second favorite part of the uh, 12 Steps suite mm-hmm. is off that mm-hmm. album as well. Yeah. Yep. Who, who's that? Who's saying my name? Oh, sorry. Melanie's trying to jump oh. in our video. What's Melanie's favorite drink? <laughs> she doesn't have one. She, doesn't she like, have one. She likes the Tangled soundtrack. So that's our next video. We're going to break that down. Yeah, the Tangled soundtrack. You want in? I've never seen it. <laughs> I can't say that I would be of any help. <laughs> after after Octavarium, I got Six Degrees. I think that album, Top to Bottom, is amazing. Uh, it has everything you want in it. My favorite Dream Theater song is on that album, The Glass Prison. Okay. I think. Just, it's, up, it's up there for me, too. I agree. Yeah, that's my favorite, hands down, favorite Dream Theater track of all time. And then War Inside My Head. Just like everything about that album, I think it's just a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. And it came out the same year the Angels on the West Daddy. So that's huge, too. <laughs> that is big. Yeah. So I associate that with that album. And the Lakers won championship, too, that year. Correct? That's right. They're third, third in a row. Yep. That was a good yep. year. Great year. And the Raiders played in the Super Bowl. And we won't talk about why. Yeah, we don't, we don't care about that. Move, moving on. No. <laughs> After that, we had a Train of Thought. Train of Thought was my, okay. that was my third favorite. Um, wow. Yeah. I, every song that they've played live, off of that album gets me genuinely excited and they still like to visit that one at least once a tour and give us something that we hadn't heard before and each time i'm very happy with the songs they choose and then agree top top two i think are their most commercially commercially successful and probably the most hits off of them in terms of like what a hit could be for a band like yeah yeah but runner up images and words i think that one is their most mainstream sounding album and it's also yep. what kicked them off as a band so i think you have to have that in at least the top three top two for me for sure every song on there pretty much hits metropolis yep. part one is one of my favorite songs that they've ever made uh even pull me under as sick as i am of hearing that song because i've been listening to it ever since i discovered the band over and over and over again and for some reason they still use it as their encore song yeah it's like it's their you, it's their don't stop believing yeah <laughs> nobody nobody wants to hear it as the encore song anymore. yeah i i wouldn't mind it uh, in the middle of a set i think it would get a huge pop if they were to just play it like do like a long song play pull me under do another long song i think that would work better especially so since people, they're not they're not a greatest hits band so you don't have to no. do it you know it's like we don't have to hear that one yeah. but i i wouldn't mind it just being in the middle of a set list because i think people would go insane and it would re-energize the show that's funny and the number one in my opinion is obvious uh metropolis part two i think that one i think is everybody's number one i think that's everybody's most asked for uh i don't see how you could argue any of their albums are better than that one just there's not a bad song on that album there's not a single one that you skip which is great because it's a concept album so if there was tracks you skipped you're kind of messing up the whole point of listening to it (laughs) and that was like yeah that was the last time that i enjoyed myself at a dream theater show because that was the time before i saw them at the microsoft where it was just sad i think what what made that metropolis is great number one i have it on vinyl out of three thousand they probably made more than that (laughs) but um what made the microsoft theater show so sad was that was the first place i saw them back when it was the nokia amphitheater and that was on the dramatic turn tour and i remember the crowd was amazing the show was great and then I was expecting. Oh that yeah, to again. We, we went to that one, but you were actually further up than we were. And I remember the look yeah. on your face when you saw them for the first time. You were you were pumped. Amazed. Oh, I, I embarrassed myself. I was screaming. <laughs> I was D- dancing, dancing in the oh, aisles. I was dancing in the aisles, <laughs> having the time of my life. Spent more money than I probably should have on merch that night. And that, you, like, I think you put on like six shirts. You were kind of <laughs> yeah. I was trying to bulk up. It was downtown LA, you know, and that was like before they cleaned up downtown LA. And oh, then, yeah. I mean, it's gotten worse since. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say COVID so. COVID returned it back to a dramatic turn of events tour <laughs> level downtown LA. There we go. But that's my list, boys. That, that's that's a great list. Thank you. I know Good I know list. you disagree with the with Dream and Day, but I think it. I would rather listen to that album than their three of their most recent albums. That's well, I'll, just, how bad I I'll just say to, to 
to prove the point of my list, there's a reason why on the most recent tour, they didn't play a single song from the last three records. Astonishing, self-titled, Distance Over Time. They didn't do one song. And those are newer records. So the fans clearly do not like those records as much. Yeah. And even Petrucci said that The Astonishing was the most polarizing record they've ever made. You either loved it or you hated it. And a lot of fans hated it. And they understand that. I think that's why they they made an album like uh, View from the Top of the World, which I thought CJ would like. But I, I think it's at least closer to Dramatic Turns. It's way better than Distance Over Time and <laughs> The Astonishing. So it, it's a big improvement. So I, I was happy with it overall. Mm. Yeah. No. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree. All right. So uh, we're going to wrap this one up. And I, I think we've got uh, other obligations to get to. But CJ. Do. Yep. Thanks for being Thank here, you. man. Thanks of for your course. time. You're, you're going to be a regular. So I think the hey, comic relief. For sure. yeah, that's right. Follow that's me right. At CJ Price Comedy on Instagram, please. Uh, I got yeah. some reels on there. Like the reels. Share them. Uh, it helps me with the algorithm if you share them. Uh, <laughs> It's all, it's, it's clean. Uh, it's HBO clean. So go ahead and check it out. <laughs> HBO. Love that. Thanks, Good guys. stuff. All right. all right. All right. Later, man. All right. Later, boys. Go, go ahead and sign off, John. <laughs> they don't know what that means, but we did. <laughs> X-Pack. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Brothers of Metal. This was episode three, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Ooh.